All right, guys, we're back again with another video, and in this video, we're going to be talking about impedance. We've had a I've had a lot of questions recently about impedance, and some of those questions are, can I use an 8-ohm woofer with a 4-ohm tweeter? And if I do, what's the nominal impedance of my speaker? I also get the question a lot of, what is the nominal impedance of my speaker, period? Because a lot of people want to make like an 8-ohm speaker, but they don't know which components to use to you know, end up with an 8-ohm speaker and so we're going to go over all of that um, right now and we're going to use this Dayton Audio PC83-8 to show you and this Dayton Audio ND20FB-4 this is a 4 ohm tweeter and this is an 8 ohm woofer and we're going to show you what actually happens with impedance and what the final impedance of these speakers will be everything you learn here you can use on any of the speakers sold here at Parts Express or anywhere else you buy them. So don't think that this is exclusive to just these drivers. It is not. So let's open up PCD and kind of see what's going on. So I loaded the drivers. I loaded both the woofer and the tweeter. And this is the frequency response we get if we just wired those together in parallel. Now you can see the wiring configuration right here. It says parallel two-way. So the great thing about PCD is it actually has impedance charts for us to look at. Now here's the impedance chart of the 8 ohm woofer. Now the first misconception in uh, the first misconception that most people make is that an 8 ohm speaker has a linear 8 ohm response. Well, it doesn't. If you take a look at it, it has a 6 ohm response here, has a 39 ohm response here, and and it fluctuates with frequency. Right here's the frequency line graph right here. And here's the um, impedance graph here. And you can see that at every frequency, it fluctuates. That's OK. That's still considered a nominal 8 ohm speaker. Now, it's very important to realize it fluctuates. And we're going to get to that reasoning behind that here in a minute. But the same thing happens with the particular tweeter that we took. The tweeter is uh, you know, somewhere around I don't know, 3 and a half ohms or so. And it goes up to 4 ohms, I'm sorry, it goes up to 5 ohms and back down, and it really only is at 4 ohms in like 3 spots. So, we're actually rarely at 4 ohms, but it's still considered a nominal 4 ohm. So, if we just wired these in parallel, and we didn't have any crossover or anything else going on, we would have a nominal impedance of about 2.67 ohms. So that's just taking an 8 ohm, nominal 8 ohm speaker and a nominal 4 ohm speaker. If you wire them in parallel, you're going to be getting that. If we wired them in series, it'd be about 12 ohms. Well, most of us don't want either of those. So how do we fix that? Well, let's see what happens when we add a crossover to it. So we're going to add a crossover of about 3,000 hertz. We're going to do a second order crossover on both the woofer and the tweeter so that we can see what actually happens with system impedance. Now, you're... Nominal impedance of your tweeter is not going to change. Your nominal impedance of your woofer is not going to change. Now remember that system impedance was about 2.67. It was almost a straight line across. Now let's see what happens now. Wow, that looks a lot different, doesn't it? Uh, in fact, that doesn't look anything like what it looked like before we added a crossover. If we look at this, you'll see, wow, that looks eerily similar to the woofer. And the low end looks eerily similar to the tweeter, right? In fact, if you click here, you can click on the high pass, low pass, and you can see that they're very similar. Now, why is that? Well, that's because we're crossing over. So when we use a crossover, it crosses over the frequencies and it starts dissipating power to the different spots. So we are now starting to power the tweeter and we are no longer powering the woofer. And that's what happens with a properly designed crossover. You don't actually have that parallel configuration like you're thinking about typically. So what does that mean for our nominal impedance? Because our nominal impedance still starts at 6 and it goes you know, way down here to 4 ohms. You know, What does that mean? Is it a 4 ohm? Is it 6 ohm? Is it 39 ohm? What is it? Well, it's actually a nominal 8 ohm speaker. Um, and I could have saved you a lot of time by just telling you this, but whatever you're going to be using as your woofer is basically going to be your nominal impedance. So if you're going to be using an 8 ohm woofer, it's going to be an 8 ohm 
impedance if you use two 4 ohm woofers in an MTM configuration in series? Well, it's going to be 8 ohm as well. Now, why? The last question is why? Well, there's a thing called power dissipation. We're not going to go really too far into that, but the basic premise behind power dissipation is the lower frequencies will use more wattage than the higher frequencies. And since the amplifier will be dedicating more power to the lower frequencies, that's what your speaker is going to be considered its nominal rating of. Now, um, that brings us to another great point, which we're going to go over real quick. And that means that that's the reason why you can use a much lower wattage tweeter with a much higher wattage woofer. It's because the way the power dissipates, you're going to be getting a lot more power to the woofer section than you are the tweeter section. In fact, it, it would not be surprising if you were getting like 0.1 of a watt at 20,000 kilohertz and still be getting you know 10 to 20 watts down in your lower frequency range. So guys, I hope you learned something and I hope that you can take this and uh, apply this to your speaker building and and understand you know what it is that you're actually uh, why why your impedance is the way it is and what your nominal impedance of your speaker system is going to be when you build it if you have any questions please throw them in the comments below and as always like the video share it with your friends and subscribe all right guys have a great night Counting double digit thousand